Every year, people all over North America report encounters with strange creatures that have no place in current taxonomic literature. From sea serpents to sasquatches, most of these mysterious animals have long featured in regional folklore. A small minority, like the Mothman of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and the Man-Wolf of Elkhorn, Wisconsin, have no precedent at all. In recent years, a new sort of monster sighting has emerged. These sightings are connected with a very special kind of mythology, one which far postdates the shadowy advent of native tradition and frontier lore. These monster myths derive from a unique variety of urban legend, which has its origins in our burgeoning age of the internet, a fictional viral horror story called the Creepypasta. Creepypastas are scary stories and images that proliferate across the internet to such an extent that they graduate into digital folklore. Instead of transmitting by ways of playgrounds, after-school hangouts, and backyard campfires, the breeding grounds of traditional urban legends, these tales spread via chainmail emails, online forums like Reddit and 4chan, and websites designed specifically for their dissemination. Perhaps the most well-known creepypasta is the tale of Slenderman, a tall, thin, faceless, suit-clad gentleman who preys on children. The Slenderman character was invented on June 10, 2009, by a Japan-based American expat for an internet Photoshop contest. Images depicting this imaginary character and his associated backstory began to circulate throughout various online forums, and in no time the Slenderman meme went viral. Creative internet users began to expand on the Slenderman legend and formulate entire stories around him, transforming him into a full-blown 21st century boogeyman. In a 2012 interview for BBC Radio 4, Slenderman's creator, Eric Knudsen, observed that, quote, even though people realized that Slenderman was created on an internet forum in June 2009, some people believe that he might be real. Two years later, this strange reality made international headlines when two teenage girls from Wisconsin stabbed their friend half to death in the hope that their crime would earn them a home in Slenderman's supposed mansion in the woods. Slenderman is not the only creepypasta monster to escape from the internet and reify itself in the material world, or at least in the minds of imaginative internet users. Another virtual invention that makes its appearance from time to time is a creature known as the Rake. The Rake myth had its genesis in late 2005, when an anonymous poster on the image board website 4chan decided to invent a new monster. The poster described his brainchild thus, Humanoid, about six feet tall when standing, but usually crouches and walks on all fours. It has very pale skin. The face is blank, as in no nose, no mouth. However, it has three solid green eyes, one in the middle of its forehead, and the other two on either side of its head, towards the back. When it attacks, a mouth opens up, as if a hinged skull that opens at the chin, reveals many tiny but dull teeth." Unquote. This monster, which appears to have been inspired by the so-called Crawlers from the 2005 horror film The Descent, evolved throughout the 4chan thread, gradually transforming into a gaunt, naked, pale-skinned, human-like creature that crawls on four long, spindly limbs. This entity was dubbed the Rake. It would be several years before the concept of the Rake gained traction in the creepypasta community. In December 2008, Posts featuring this made-up monster appeared on the Russian social networking site LiveJournal. In April 2009, the creature returned to 4chan, its birthplace. Two months later, the rake made its way onto SomethingAwful.com, where it served as an inspiration for Eric Knudsen's Slenderman. By 2010, the legend of the rake was spreading like wildfire throughout the internet, 
infiltrating all manner of creepypasta websites and engendering fan art and creative fiction which added depth and color to its mythos. Then, in 2012, something incredible happened. Internet users, ostensibly in earnest, began reporting frightening encounters with emaciated, pale, hairless, man-like creatures that crawled on all fours. Apparently oblivious to the fact that the objects of these encounters bore striking resemblance to the fictional rake, internet users attempted to equate these entities with characters of Native American mythology. Some suggested that they were skinwalkers, medicine men of Navajo lore who possessed the ability to transform into animals. Others proposed that these bony humanoids were manifestations of the Wendigo, an evil cannibalistic spirit of Cree and Algonquin legend. Others still began to invent new names for these creatures, such as Flesh Gates, Goat Men, and Crawlers, the latter evoking the 2005 movie villains who likely helped inspire the rake in the first place. It would be tempting to dismiss these sightings as attention-seeking hoaxes or innocent misidentifications owing to the power of suggestion were it not for their chilling profusion. The staggering quantity of reliable witnesses who claim to have seen these creatures, coupled with the fact that many witnesses appear to be ignorant of the urban legend which their sightings evoke, suggests two almost inconceivable possibilities. That the creator of the rake meme, through some mysterious process, unconsciously contrived an entity that already existed, or that the human imagination somehow willed these beings into existence. These bizarre notions beget the uncomfortable question, what came first, the monster or the myth? In January 2019, a northern Canadian named Don Herbert shared his own crawler sighting with this author. Herbert is a miner who hails from the remote town of Hay River, Northwest Territories, located on the southern shores of Great Slave Lake. He works in bi-weekly rotations, spending two weeks at the mine, followed by two weeks off at home. One night in mid-August 2018, during his annual summer vacation about a week prior to his scheduled return to work, Herbert found himself alone in his truck, driving through the woods on the Northwest Territories Highway 2 more commonly known as the Hay River Highway. This stretch of road is one of the most remote thoroughfares in all of Canada, beginning on the shores of Great Slave Lake and skirting the western bank of the Hay River before joining the Mackenzie Highway 38 kilometers to the south. Drowsy, road-weary, and anxious to get home, Don was a few miles from town when a pale figure emerged in his truck's headlights, crouched on all fours in the ditch on the left-hand side of the road. From wolves to wolverines, Don had encountered plenty of animals during nighttime drives through the boreal wilderness, but this creature was unlike anything he had ever seen before. Its skin was grayish white and completely hairless. Its head, which he estimated to be only slightly smaller than his own, was bald and didn't appear to have any ears. Aside from a pair of dark eyes, its only facial feature was a cruel-looking beak-like mouth. Its legs were long and spindly, and appeared to taper sharply towards the feet, which were obscured by long grass. The creature, which impressed Don as being highly intelligent, appeared to notice him in the driver's seat. Bearing its beak-like teeth, it crouched slightly, dug in with its front legs, and launched itself at Don's truck, leaving a small cloud of dust in its wake. Instead of slamming into the side of the vehicle as its course indicated it was likely to, the creature turned deftly on the side of the road and loped alongside the truck. Alarmed, Don stepped on the gas and raced for home, leaving the frightening creature behind in the gloom of the forest. In the months that followed his horrifying encounter, Don spent his free time attempting to identify and track down the strange animal that he saw, secretly fearing that it was a demon. The following is Don Herbert's own account of his search for the mysterious crawler lightly edited by this author for the purpose of concision and continuity, which he has generously allowed me to publish for the first time in this article. During that remaining week, I did not return to the location of the encounter with the creature. More specifically, I could not return to the location. I was now absolutely terrified to do so, even in daylight, not a chance. Around this time, things were starting to sink in, and I started to notice some fundamental changes starting to happen with my behavior. I reside in town, and my home faces the Hay River. The house itself is set back a ways from the street, 
resulting in a fairly long driveway of maybe 30 feet or so. I can walk across the street in front of my home and access a nature trail that follows the river. On the other side of the river is wilderness, save for a gravel road that provides access to a First Nations reserve. Directly behind my home, there is a green area as well. A couple of days after the incident, I was taking my garbage to the curb after dark. There was a street lamp across the street, so it wasn't entirely pitch black. However, as I was carrying my garbage can to the curb, I felt a sense of nervousness starting to develop. It became worse the closer I got to the woods on the opposite side of the street, at the end of the driveway. As I progressed to the street, I couldn't help but to continue to scan the tree line on the opposite side of the road in both directions, watching for any signs of movement. After I placed my garbage can at the street, I could not bring myself to turn my back to the darkened woods out of a deep sense of fear. To return to the house, I backstepped the length of the driveway, keeping a close eye on the tree line until I reached the front end of my truck, which was parked in the driveway. Only then did I turn around to make the final distance onto my front deck, then into my house with my back to the woods. I knew then and there that the encounter with the creature had affected me more than I cared to admit. Up until that point, I was trying my hardest to put the incident out of my mind and continue on as normal. I did not want to even start thinking about it. Every time my thoughts wandered back to it, I would try thinking of something else entirely. I didn't even want to begin to try and form an opinion. I was hoping I could just forget about the encounter altogether and simply move on. Well, let's just say that's easier said than done. When I got back into my house after putting the trash out, I sat down on the couch. I realized at that moment in time that there was no way I was going to be able to avoid confronting the subject. The simple fact of the matter was, those four to five seconds on the highway that night had changed my life forever, whether I tried to continue to deny it to myself or not. And so it began. I asked myself the one question I was trying my absolute best to avoid from the very moment I passed by the creature and the encounter ended. What in the hell was that? I returned to work for my two-week rotation shortly after that. I started to tell the story to as many people as I could, in the hopes that someone may have had a similar story or shared a similar experience. I wondered if I'd had a hallucination. I surfed the web for images similar to the creature I had seen. I read reports of sightings of strange creatures in the hope that someone out there may have experienced a similar encounter. I was sincerely hoping to find a natural explanation for what I had seen. When I started looking for information on the creature, there were only two options at this point that I really cared to entertain. The first, and most probable in my mind, was that I had experienced a hallucination of some sort. What confused me most about this theory was that I had not only seen the creature, but I had heard it as well. The experience just seemed too real. The second option was that I had perhaps witnessed a species of animal never before seen or reported. This is where I was officially introduced to the world of cryptozoology. Now don't get me wrong, I was not totally ignorant of the cryptid world prior to this encounter. In fact, I probably possess more knowledge about the subject than most average people. I currently prospect the Nahani region, and earlier in life spent two seasons placer mining on the Liard River just a ways upriver from its confluence with the South Nahani. You can't research the area from a geological perspective, in a search for minerals, or frequent the region without becoming aware of the mysteries surrounding the area. I have always tried to keep an open mind about things, but the moment of my encounter was the first time I actually thought that some of the stories I've read and some of the tales I've heard over the years could potentially have some measure of truth to them. Frustrated by his inability to identify the creature, the incredulity of his co-workers, and his newfound fear of the wilderness, which infringed upon his lifelong love of outdoor recreation, Don resolved to find the creature and kill it. I returned from work on the evening of September 4th, 2018, arriving home at just after 8 o'clock p.m. As we were landing at the airport, the sun was just starting to dip below the horizon. Tim, a friend I work with, who was also on the flight, kindly offered me a lift home from the airport. Tim was the first person to whom I had relayed the story of my encounter. I had been very anxious to speak with him two weeks earlier, as I waited for the flight to the mine. In the past, Tim has both hunted and trapped to make a living. He has extensive knowledge of the subject. I thought that if anyone would have seen or heard of anything like this creature, it would be him. 
When Tim dropped me off at home, he was then heading to his own home and family. They reside on an acreage about 10 minutes south of town, in the direction of where I saw the creature. Tim's family also owns a secluded cottage along the Hay River, near the Alberta Northwest Territories border, and as such they spend a lot of time on the highway, traveling back and forth, passing the location where I had seen the creature. Tim knew I intended to try and find the track that evening, and wished me luck. When he dropped me off at home, I quite literally tossed my bags inside the door of my home, got in my truck, and proceeded to head out on the highway to where the encounter with the creature had taken place. At this point in time, the encounter was all I could think about. It was very quickly becoming an obsession, if indeed it hadn't already. Before I could even begin to move forward, I had to find the answers to one fundamental question. Did it leave any tracks? Visions and spirits and hallucinations do not leave physical tracks. Three weeks had now elapsed since the encounter. I didn't feel I had much chance of success in finding any tracks in the ditch where I first noticed the creature, or on the shoulder of the highway where it approached me, as it had rained a few times in the two weeks I was at work. I was hoping beyond hope that I was not already too late. Even with the sun now behind the horizon and darkness fast approaching, I had to go. I could not take the chance of one more minute of time elapsing before I had the opportunity to find that sign. I felt my very sanity now hinged on finding that one single particular track on the shoulder of the highway. This was not only a search for a strange creature, but also an attempt to confirm that I wasn't on the path of early dementia or beginning to lose grip on reality. On the drive out, I was trying to reconcile the fact that this could go two ways. The first was that, if I found the tracks, it would mean the creature is real. The second was that, if I didn't find the tracks, it would mean that I'm losing my mind. Neither option was very appealing. It was not the most pleasant drive, to say the least. I slowed as I approached the area the encounter took place, and there it was, the skid mark the creature had left, just where I thought it would be. I parked on the side of the road about 20 feet from the track. I got out with my iPhone on record to get some video I could look at later. I was not stepping one foot off the pavement, however. I scanned the area with my phone as long as I dared and got the hell back in the truck and started heading back to town. I had to get Tim. I had to get Tim. I had to get Tim. That was all I could think as I drove back to Tim's place ten minutes away, hoping that I could get him to take a look at the track before dark. I could not stop myself from imposing on Tim, who had just returned to his family after two weeks. I just had to get Tim. Tim was gracious enough to come out with me and examine the track. He offered his opinion that it looked similar to a goat track, but since the track was at least three weeks old, you would never be able to tell for sure. This would be unusual, as goats aren't known in the region. As Tim was now with me, I managed to summon the courage to now actually step off the pavement and have a look in the ditch where I first spotted the creature. In the dim light, I could tell something had left signs of activity, but the signs were only faintly visible due to their age. I also followed the path it took up the ditch towards the gravel shoulder and found its approach tracks as well. We didn't spend a great deal of time investigating the tracks due to the failing light and soon headed back home. It was dark as I dropped Tim back off at home. The tree line across from my driveway was dark as I returned home to the couch. I had some thoughts to process and a heart to get back into my chest. While having my coffee the next morning, I decided to try out a new hobby and become an amateur cryptozoologist. I intended to approach the hunt for the creature in a scientific manner the best I could, and let the experts come to their own conclusions based on any evidence I could gather. Finding the tracks made me confident that I was dealing with an animal. My former anger subsided into fascination. I decided to set out to prove that this thing exists. Don Herbert began his investigation at the abandoned gravel pit, located about a mile from the site of his encounter. The area was perpetually crisscrossed with animal tracks, and Don hoped that the mysterious creature might leave some sign of its presence there. For nearly two weeks, he checked the site every morning for fresh prints. On the twelfth day, his diligence was rewarded. There, in the frost-encrusted soil, were two pairs of strange animal tracks, which he interpreted as belonging to a mother and her offspring. Herbert reasoned that the presence of a young one might explain the creature's hostile reaction on the highway. Perhaps the creature had been attempting to chase him off, or direct his attention away from her progeny. Herbert proceeded to search for the creature's den in the woods near the site of his encounter, on the side of the highway closest to the river, 
reasoning that the creature's hairlessness was an indication that it hibernated during the winter. During his search, he came across several more of the strange prints. These tracks often appeared in the vicinity of wolf tracks, which Don took as an indication that the creature is a scavenger which subsists on the leavings of predators. On September 17, 2018, Don Herbert discovered the outlet of an old drainage culvert which was covered with fresh vegetation, as if someone, or something, had attempted to conceal it. He suspected that this might be the creature's den, and set up game cameras to monitor the entrance. When the cameras failed to yield any interesting footage, Don crawled into the culvert and found it empty and unusually clean. Don Herbert took several photos of the strange animal's tracks during his investigation, and showed four of the best of them to experienced animal trackers with whom he was personally acquainted. None of the woodsmen were able to identify the tracks. He then sent the photos to the Alliance of Natural History Museums of Canada. The Alliance forwarded the photos to several biologists, none of whom were able or willing to interpret them. The author of this piece later sent Don's photos to two expert animal trackers, one of them a distinguished Canadian hunter who preferred to remain anonymous. Both experts claimed that the tracks in three of the photos were too faint to accurately identify, but agreed that the track featured in figure three is clearly that of a wolf. After doing a little research of his own, this author, who was admittedly a complete novice when it comes to interpreting animal tracks, observed that the tracks in figures one and two appear to bear some resemblance to the prints left by wolverines. When asked to produce a sketch of the mysterious animal he saw, Don sent this author an illustration made by deviant art artist Demon Girl 99, which he claimed was very similar to the creature he witnessed. In private correspondence with this author, Demon Girl 99 claimed that her illustration was based off another image produced by fellow deviant art creator Cryptidical. The original piece features the Fisherman, a rake like monster which Cryptidical invented. In an accompanying description, the artist explained his creation thus. Much like the Slender Man and the Tall Gentleman, the Fisherman is a mysterious humanoid entity which seems bent on creating terror and fear in its wake. It has only been seen around water, and often shows itself to small groups or individuals of its choosing. Its figure has never been glimpsed in full light, but from what can be understood from witnesses that come across it, it is extremely lanky. It often walks on four limbs, and never on two. It's agile and coordinated, and seems to be able to guide its long appendages with ease and grace. Don Herbert assured this author that he fully intended to continue the search for the mysterious creature, which he believed to be an undiscovered species of terrestrial origin, and agreed to furnish me with any updates on his progress. In November 2019, nine months after his previous correspondence, Herbert got in touch with this author a second time, claiming to have finally photographed the creature with trail cameras he had set up for that purpose. Attached to his message was a startling nighttime photograph of Hibernal Tega, in the left background of which, in the shadows of the forest, crouched a pale, black-eyed, malevolent-looking creature, identical in appearance to the mysterious roadside monster described by Herbert. The excitement which this tantalizing new development engendered in this author was tempered somewhat by one of Herbert's follow-up photographs which depicted the same patch of boreal forest in the summertime and in daylight, its features unobscured by snow and darkness. In this second photo, in the same spot at which the creature lurked in the winter photo, sits a tangle of branches. In this author's opinion, at least, this snarled foliage bears vague resemblance in both shape and dimension to the sinister-looking figure from the winter photo, hinting at the possibility that the disturbing form constitutes little more than a cluster of scrub covered with snow its frightening appearance merely the result of pareidolia, the human tendency to perceive human-like features in random patterns and formations. Then again, Herbert's trail cameras only take photos in response to movement. Something caused the shutter to open on that night the picture was taken. Was it a feather or a fragment of greenery blown by an errant gust of wind? The night appears to have been calm and still, judging from the state of the trees had a squirrel or an owl skittered into the frame. No such animals appear in the photo. 
Or could the camera truly have responded to the motion of the same spooky creature witnessed by Don Herbert on the side of the Hay River Highway, crawling its way through the snow? Intriguingly, Don Herbert is not the only Canuck to report an encounter with a crawler in the Canadian backwoods. In 2012, a Reddit user with the handle TossO described his own brush with a similar creature in an unidentified national park in Newfoundland in the summer of 2010. While cruising through a barren valley one moonlit night, the poster saw a large, stocky, naked, humanoid creature crawling rapidly towards a stretch of road that lay before him. The creature was completely hairless, and its skin was, quote, a deathly, nauseating white with a greasy shine, unquote. As he approached the creature, the poster observed that it, quote, had a rubbery face, distorted by hate or a scream, and black eyes that reflected in the moonlight, unquote. The poster was horrified by the creature's facial expression, which gave him the impression that, quote, it was intelligent and wanted to tear him apart with its teeth. Similar to Don Herbert's creature, this monster appeared to be on a collision course with the poster's vehicle. I braced for it to run into my car door, the Redditor wrote, and then it was gone. The rear-view mirror showed me nothing. Tosso ended his post by voicing his suspicion, evocative of one of Don Herbert's theories, that the creature he witnessed was a demon. In 2017, Reddit user Bale Bongeman claimed to have encountered an emaciated, human-like figure while on a camping trip with his father somewhere in northern Ontario's cabin country when he was 9 or 10 years old. While canoeing on a lake with his father during a muscle hunting excursion, the Redditor caught a glimpse of something strange amidst the trees on the shore. I couldn't make it out very well, the Redditor wrote, but it was white, almost like the texture of birch, and very lanky. I remember thinking that it definitely wasn't a person, but it wasn't too far from the general shape of one. It was staggering around lethargically and slowly. If it was an animal, then something was definitely wrong with it. I waded over to my dad and told him to look up there and by that point, it was gone. Later on in the post, the Redditor related other interesting, if unrelated, anecdotes regarding this particular camping spot, including one involving a strange humming noise that he and his father would sometimes hear in the nearby marshes, which was often preceded by sudden and utter silence, and another revolving around a small peninsula on the lake that was covered with mushrooms and dead trees and pervaded by a terrible stench. The Redditor ended his post with what he considered the most disturbing story regarding the lake on which he and his father would often vacation. Quote, I remember one morning, I had woken up just before sunrise and was still in bed. In the window adjacent to my bed, I saw something that usually wasn't there. It was half a face poking around the edge of the window and staring into our cabin. Sickly pale orange with giant black holes where the eyes were supposed to be. This thing was definitely not human. I hid under the covers and eventually fell back to sleep. When I woke up again, everyone was also awake, and there was no sign of anything there. Crawlers are not the only creepypasta-esque creatures purported to wander the Canadian wilderness. In recent years, several Reddit users have claimed to have witnessed tall, thin, naked, bipedal humanoids bearing characteristics of both Slenderman and the Rake in various Canadian locales. One of these is Redditor Lilybird GK who created a post in 2016 in which she described her boyfriend's strange encounter with a mysterious entity the previous summer. In August 2015, the poster and her boyfriend rented a cabin in the Ovens Natural Park, Nova Scotia, an area famous for its spectacular seaside cliffs and their many sea caves or ovens. They spent their first day in the park hiking a cliffside trail and exploring the area's eponymous formations. That night, the couple and a few of their friends settled down in their rented cabin for a game of cards. The poster's boyfriend lost gracelessly, his temper exacerbated by jokes directed at him by one of his friends, which were intended to poke fun at his stature. To cool off, he decided to go for a walk outside alone. When her boyfriend failed to return after half an hour, the anxious poster called him on his cell phone. He did not answer her call, but quickly phoned her back and asked where she was. The poster, somewhat confused, replied that she was still in the cabin. After a pause, the boyfriend declared that he was coming back immediately, his voice betraying a hint of alarm. When he finally arrived at the cabin, he told his girlfriend a disturbing tale. Quote, he had walked out to the trails to get some fresh air and sat down on one of the benches to look out at the ocean. The moon was pretty bright that night, so everything was illuminated pretty well. 
Then he heard someone walking by, and he saw this really tall and pale figure stop and look at him, and then continue on. For some reason, he assumed this was me coming to look for him, and that's when I called him and told him I was in the cabin. He said that, in retrospect, it was inhumanly tall and pale, thanks babe, and couldn't possibly be a person. He was not himself for the rest of the night, and didn't seem normal until lunch the next day. Throughout the latter half of 2018, Reddit user MZULFT10989 posted about his own encounters with a strange entity which visited his property in the city of Quesnel in central British Columbia. The Redditor's first alleged encounter took place in the early summer, when he noticed an eerie humanoid creature, quote, running inhumanly fast through the field behind his house, before vaulting over a 5.5 foot tall fence and disappearing into the woods. This creature was emaciated, white-skinned, and, quote, at least seven feet tall, with a gaping mouth and no eyes. Unlike the crawler that Don Herbert encountered, this creature was bipedal and ran with a man-like gait. In August 2018, the same Redditor published another post in which he claimed to have seen the mysterious creature again, this time at night, darting through a field on his property and jumping the fence into his neighbor's yard. Two weeks later, the Redditor caught this same creature peering at him from around the side of his house. Frightened, he retreated indoors. Later, he examined the area at which the creature had stood and found scratch marks on the exterior of his house. In October 2018, the Redditor reported a third encounter. While he was sitting outside on the back porch facing his field, the creature appeared and raced across his property, as it had done several times before. This time, however, it stopped in the middle of the field and turned to stare at the Redditor. Before the petrified Canadian had time to react, the creature ran down the field and leapt into his neighbor's yard. On another occasion, the poster saw the creature peering at him through his living room window. He ran upstairs to retrieve his hunting bow, with which he intended to protect himself, but by the time he returned downstairs, the creature was gone. The subject of the Redditor's fourth and final post took place in November 2018, about two weeks after his previous encounter. This time, the man found the creature staring into his barn through an open window. The entity apparently learned that it was being watched, turned to face the Redditor, and emitted a piercing shriek before running into his neighbor's yard and into the woods. Although it's not exactly a Canadian crawler story, the author of this book has decided to end this chapter with a lightly edited audio clip sent to him by a lovely lady from southern United States named Missy Sterling. Several years ago, Sterling had her own encounter with a strange, pale humanoid creature on a highway in Alabama. Her experience has several interesting congruencies with that told by Don Herbert, of which she was unaware at the time. Specifically, both Missy and Don encountered their creatures while driving. Both subsequently struggled to rationalize the event in their minds, and both, in the aftermath of their encounters, developed fears regarding their sanity. The following is Sterling's own account of her encounter. It's been a couple years. I was on my way home from my mother's house. She lives in Alabama, um, and I live in Mississippi, right on the state line, so Columbus, Mississippi, to um, Vernon, Alabama. And I'm driving down the road, and... Um, up ahead, like, I can see something in the road. And so I think, you know, it's a deer. The, these roads are heavily populated in the wintertime with deer. Um, really, summer too, anytime. There's deer everywhere. So I start slowing down. And by the time I get on this thing, I'm at a complete stop. And I'm looking at it, and I'm, I'll be completely honest, I pissed myself because it was like, this was nothing I had ever seen. And I had this experience where, I don't know, my brain, it was like running patterns and coming up with nothing. Um, and this thing, it looked like a, it was a baby. Um, it was smaller. Um, and I don't know where I got this sense from, but I thought like it was a kid, like not a human kid though, because this thing, it was like a weird, weird white color. It was chalk, like, like I said, chalk white. And it had these huge eyes and they reflected my headlights, but they were black. It had like maybe a it looked like a slip for a mouth and it, it looked terrified. Like I, I also got the sense that it was just as scared as I was. And it was frozen, kind of like a deer in headlights. And I was too, you know, I, I mean, I, <laughs> 
for a second, I froze. I don't even know how long I was sitting there in the middle of this road, just stopped with this thing in front of my vehicle, also stopped. When I got up on it, it was on all fours. And then it stood up and walked off. And its movements, it was very jerky. And I mean, like nothing I'd ever seen. So um, when this thing stood up on it, when I was in the road, it stood up on its two legs and took off. Um, this screech, it let out this screech. And it was, oh, I can't, I'm getting chills right now. And I just, you know, I noped the fuck out of there. I was, I mean, it, I was still, scra- I felt like I was scrambled. Like I couldn't get myself together. And so I get up the right of ways and I pull over and I cried. <laughs> I had to go home and change my pants, but... I got this sense that this thing was just as scared as I was. I got home and I, you know, I didn't say anything at first because you you wonder if you're crazy, if you hallucinated. Um, I mean, you try to do anything to rationalize the experience because it is completely irrational. And so then I started telling people about it. And I was surprised that, you know, no one really made fun of me. They were a bit freaked out, but... um, I hadn't found anyone that had experienced anything similar. And some time goes by, and I, st- I can't let it go. And I start looking online, and I um, came across this video completely by accident. But um, this guy called Rick or Richard Grabenick, he has a video up, and he's filmed this thing in his backyard, like through his porch screen. And when I saw it, when I saw the video, like chills ran down my spine because the movements, the whiteness of this thing, it was, I mean, unmistakable. And it's just, I mean, the video comments are full of people saying, oh, this is fake. There, You know, there's a naked crackhead in your yard. But I, you can hear this guy on the phone with his preacher. He called his preacher and he is just freaked out. And, you know, he asked the cre- the preacher to <laughs> creature, sorry. He asked the preacher to start praying, and the guy does it. And you can tell that he is very obviously freaked out. But more than anything, the movement of this thing is what made me believe that it was a, a 100% authentic video. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know what this is, but I think um, this there's definitely something going on. I, I don't see how someone could recreate that, especially, and there's another video uh, from Canada, actually, and you may have heard of this when it was pretty popular, of um, some white creature stalking a moose on the roadside. And everybody says, well, it's it's a smudge on the window. And the first time I saw the video, I, and this could just be my mistake, but I swear it was a lot clearer. Um, and maybe I'm wrong, but even still, with with it as blurry as it is, I don't see how anyone can say this is a a smudge on the window. And it's those same jerky type movements. I mean, obviously, I can't account for the authenticity of any of them because I didn't record them. But I can account for the authenticity of my own experience. And it happened and I saw it. It was there, man, you know. If you'd like to learn more about Missy Sterling's experience or about her subsequent investigation into the crawler phenomenon, please check out her own video on the subject which you can find by clicking the link in the description.